Consumers act and react on the basis of perceptions. So what is perception? In today's class, we are going to discuss what is perception, what are the different elements of perception, and why is it important for marketers to study about perception. Perception is the process by which individuals select, organize, and interpret stimuli into a meaningful and coherent picture of the world. So, Individual, two different individuals are exposed to a similar stimuli, they'll have completely different meanings. Uh, why? Because it's a highly individualized process. The whole process is based on one's own needs, wants, expectations, and past experiences. For each individual, reality is a person-based phenomenon. Individuals take decision on what they perceive to be real. This is why it is important for marketeers to understand the notion of perception. Perception is about consumers' subjective understandings and not objective realities. Subjective understandings are very hard to alter and can be even impossible to change. In order to alter consumers' perceptions, companies often upgrade their visual identities. While doing so, they must be very careful that they should not deviate too much from their original identity because it might confuse their core consumers. Here is one such example, Heinz Ketchup. This one is a traditional uh, ketchup bottle and this one is an upgraded one. They upgraded their visual identity through some minor changes. Let's look at those changes. First, if you see, there is a small green pickle in the picture. They replace the decade old small green pickle with this tomato on a wine. Why did they do so? Because consumers are now looking for a healthier option. Another key thing that they did was, if you notice, the font size of ketchup remains the same, but the font size of tomato was enlarged to reflect the content of tomato. And another thing is, the third one, fridge door fit. Um, a few times, uh, some time back, not all the products came in fridge door friendly uh, bottles and hindsight, but that is no longer an issue. So why do keep it there? So this is a classic example of how to, how to upgrade the visual identity without changing, without having to change the identity completely. Human beings are constantly bombarded with stimuli each day, every hour, every minute. So what is sensation? What are sensory inputs? What is stimuli? Sensation is the immediate and direct response of the sensory organs to stimuli. What is stimuli? Stimuli is any input received from sensory receptors. Sensory receptors are mouth, eyes, ear, skin and nose. Anything that can receive sensory input. Uh, these sensory inputs can be in the form of touch, sight, smell, uh, hair, anything. Why is, why is that important for marketers? Most of the communications is based on your sense of sight and sound. That is why you see ad campaigns like these, uh, the visuals, the TV, TV ads, everything is targeted to instigate a response from your sensory organs of uh, eyes and ears. What is absolute threshold? It is the lowest level at which the person can experience a sensation. The point at which the person can detect the difference between something and nothing. For example, uh, the distance at which a driver spots a billboard is the absolute threshold for that stimuli. Two people riding together may spot the billboard at different times because they are having two different absolute thresholds. After an hour's driving through billboards, I doubt that any of the billboards will make any impression. This phenomenon is known as sensory adaptation. What is sensory adaptation? It is getting used to certain sensations becoming accommodated to a certain level of stimulation 
and becoming less able to notice particular stimulus. This is a major concern for marketers. This is why they constantly change their promotional campaigns because they understand that their consumers will get used to those campaigns and the advertisements will uh, make uh, will no longer make any impression on the consumer. In order to break the clutter, often at times consumer uh, companies come up with out of the box campaigns and completely innovative or different campaigns. Sometimes they do backfire, but they they have to break that clutter just because of this sensory adaptation. Many of the promotional efforts to increase the sensory input take the form of ambush marketing. What is ambush marketing? Ambush marketing is placing ads in places where consumers do not expect and cannot be cannot readily avoid them. This directly increases the sensory input. Um, <clears throat> we have lots of examples of uh, ambush marketing. We have seen brands stamping their logos on supermarket eggs. Uh, we have seen <coughs> advertisements in washrooms. How can you avoid this advertisement? It will definitely make an impression on you. Another method of breaking the sensory clutter is through experiential marketing. Experiential marketing allows the consumers to engage and interact with the brand and it forms an emotional connection between the two. Uh, many companies use sporting events, music concerts, community festivals <coughs> to create an ambiance around their brand for experiential marketing. What is the differential threshold? It is the minimum difference that can be detected between two similar stimuli. It is also known as just noticeable difference. J and D. So what is JND? JND is the minimum difference. Uh, so for example, we have two stimuli and the initial stimula, uh, stimulus uh, is very strong. So you will need that additional intensity in the second stimulus to have a perceived difference. Uh, it has many implications. For example, uh, during an economic downturn when a company is already has uh, squeezed on profits, uh, they want to raise their prices, but any small raise in price will be detected by the customers. So what they do, they instead of increasing the price, they decrease the quantity of the product. Uh, so instead of increasing one dollar or 0.2 cents, they decrease the quantity of the product by 10 grams, 100 grams, so that the consumers won't notice that because it is below. J and D, just noticeable difference. J and D has important implications for marketers. First, the marketers want some changes to be prevented from being noticed. For example, reduction in size, reduction in product quality, or an increase in price. They do not want these changes to be noticed by the consumers. On the other hand, marketers want some changes, the product improvements, to be noticed by the consumers. That is why you see a lot of these kind of packaging and advertisements. New logo, new and improved, upgraded, uh, available at every store now. All these things are to make that perceived difference between the two stimuli. Marketers often want to upgrade their identity without losing the recognition of their loyal consumers. J and D, the concept of J and D is applicable because they make many small number of changes which are below the J and D. For example, this is Petty Kroger's image from General Mills, the symbol of General Mills. It has uh, gone through several changes. This one was in 1936 and this one is in 1996. So, but if you can see that the basic symbol remains the same, it has gone through a lot of changes. But the basic symbol was the same. Why? Because they want that continuous consumer recognition. Similarly, Xerox has made several changes uh, from 1961 till now. 
But if you look closely, they have always made those changes, keeping in mind just noticeable difference by making small changes from 1961 till 2008. They never change too drastically. That is why this logo is, which is entirely different from the logo in 1961, but this logo is acceptable for the consumers now. Marketers who do not consider JND may anger their loyal customers. One such example is of Gap. Gap changed their logo from this to this and they received an immediate negative response from their customers and they had to go back to their original logo within a year. Starbucks is an interesting example. Starbucks changed its logo completely, changed the colors. They also received a negative response, but their management believed that as time passes on, consumers will accept it. Uh, there's another such example of Tropicana. Uh, it traditionally was linked with an orange with a straw, and that was their identity, and they changed it. Consumers gave a very negative response and associated this packaging with any other orange juice uh, that was in the market uh, available from the local suppliers. They lost their identity because of not taking into account the JND principles. Subliminal perception is any information that you receive from your senses that you are not consciously aware of happening. So, in advertising, subliminal messages are those auditory or visual messages that your conscious mind is not aware of, but part of your subconscious mind will know what the real meaning behind that hidden message. Even if you are actively looking for that concealed message, consciously you won't be able to decode that message. However, your subconscious mind um, will decode it and that stimuli will react to the concealed message.